Welcome Chess Ending fans. Well, last weekend the Waltzman played in the 4NCL's first ever online congress. And this was a very well organised event. And afterwards um, the organisers made available PGNs of all of the games. And the Waltzman looked through the scores to see if there were any interesting endings to share that were played in the tournament. And this little gem was one of the positions that stood out and it was played in round three. Now usually the Waldsman at this point would introduce the players but if you've seen previous videos though you'll know that unless um, they've given permission he prefers not to do this if the game has not been archived on a website like chessgames.com. Let's just say that uh, playing white and black would, were just two regular guys who love chess. As ever, the position is chosen for its instructional value, recognising that everyone makes mistakes and can learn from mistakes. So let's consider the position. Now it's pretty clear what's going on here. White is a piece up and he wins if he's able to capture the black pawn on a6 with his king and queen the a pawn. And in order to do that, he's going to have to make sure that black can't get his king in front of the a pawn. Because it's a rook's pawn and the a8 square, the queening square, is the opposite colour to that of the bishop. And that's a, a well-known um, drawing defence. If you can get your king on, let's say, b7 or a8, um, then it'll be, it'll be impregnable. White won't be able to dislodge the king and attempts to do so will, will just lead to stalemate. So um, black to move, um, well black's strategy is, is to just get his king to b7 uh, and a8. Uh, or failing that, black also draws if he can capture white's a pawn. And he can use his past h pawn to decoy the bishop uh, in order to try and achieve um, that objective. Okay, so um, it's black's move in this position. In order to identify the best move for black, let's just consider though what would happen if, if white had the move in this position. What would the result be? Well, let's see. Um, white to play will go king f7, headed for a6. Black plays king f5, opposing kings. White king moves closer to a6, goes king e7. Black answers king e5, opposing kings again. White goes king d7. And black uh, opposes kings one more time. He goes king d5. And now there's a neat little uh, intermezzo in the position. White doesn't go king c7, but instead he plays the move bishop f2. And that denies access to c5. The black king can no longer go there. Um, and this is this is winning because uh, h4 um, isn't going to work because white just has time to capture. Bishop takes h4 and then can the bishop can either fall back to e1 or d8 and that will be in time to to prevent black from capturing the a pawn. And if black goes king c4, then white has king c6. And after king b4. Well, white goes king b6, and, and he's carried out his plan. Okay, so let's, uh, let's just go back. So this variation uh, gives us a clue as to what black should play in this position. And in fact, there are several drawing moves, but um, king f6 is, is the clearest, denying white's king access to f7. So now if white goes king h7, going after the h-pawn, well, black can go king e6, and after king g6, let's say he goes king d5, white captures the h-pawn, but black will go king c6, and this is a cast iron draw because black is just going to bury his king in the a8 corner square, uh, and that will guarantee the draw. Okay, let's, let's go back again. So after king f6, um, if white goes the other way, if white goes king f8, 
Then, um, let's see what happens after that. Black goes king e6. White goes king e8. Black goes king d6. White goes king d8. Black goes king c6. White goes king c8. And now black goes king b5. And white goes king b7. And if black didn't have the h-pawn, um, this, this position would be lost for him. He'd have to move his king and the a-pawn would be lost and there would be just no way of getting the king to, to a8 uh, from here. White can frustrate that. But the h-pawn acts as a decoy and this, um, this forces the, the bishop away. Um, you know, he can maybe, he can wait a move, but after h3, white has to go bishop g3. And black will just capture the a pawn, and achieve um, and achieve the draw. All right. Now in the game, though, um, this didn't happen. Um, black didn't go um, king f six, and instead, um, black played the very natural move h four. But uh, this this is um, this is a losing move, um, and we'll see we'll see why this should lose. White takes the opportunity to go king f7. No surprises there. Black went h3. And this forces the white bishop to come to g3. It has to cover h2. That's the last dark square um, before the queening square. Black went king g4, attacking the bishop. And so the bishop um, retreated along the diagonal and went to bishop b8, well out of harm's way. And black played king f3. And now white made uh, made a good decision here. He went king e7. Remember, white's um, winning plan is to is to capture the a6 pawn. Uh, when black is unable to get his king to um, to a8, so black reacted to this. He went king e4. And now white missed a trick, and he went wrong in this position. Um, essentially, I think white just miscounted. So um, he played the inconsistent move. He played king f6, going after the h-pawn. Um, and after king d5, king g5, king c6, king h4. Um, Black, Black actually went king b5 here. Um, he, he doesn't have to, uh, to win the a-pawn. He could just go king b7, and that would also be a draw. But uh, he went king b5. Because he's in time to capture the a-pawn. Um, this is, is also a, a cast iron draw. Um, if bishop c7, then black just goes h2, white has to capture that pawn, and, and black takes on, on a5. But rewinding, what should uh, what what should white have done in this position instead of um, instead of the move uh, king f6? Well, uh, he should have carried on with the plan. He should have gone king d7. And now after black opposes kings with king d5, white has another very neat little intermezzo. He has the move bishop d6, yet again denying the black king access to c5. Uh, and so after king c4, white can go king c6. Notice how white takes the opposition. Um, the kings are opposed again. But it's black who has to give way. And after, let's say, h2, bishop takes h2, king b4, then white has this move, king b6. Uh, and white, again, succeeds in carrying out his, his winning plan. So, uh, you know, a very nice uh, little end endgame. Um, I hope that you picked up a few, uh, a few tips about how to handle positions uh, like this. Thanks for watching.